Welcome to Dunseverick Baptist Church this Easter Sunday evening and a very warm welcome to you wherever you're joining us from. The angels said unto Mary and unto the disciples, He is not here for he is risen. That is the good news of Easter and the redemption and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's unite our hearts in praise as we sing our first hymn together. Sunday. Let's unite our hearts now as we come to pray for the work and the Word of God as well as give thanks for it. Let's pray. Dear Lord, on this Easter Sunday we thank you for such a great salvation. We remember the person of it in the Lord Jesus Christ who on Good Friday died upon the cross of Calvary and there he gave his life a ransom for all, shedding his precious blood to save our souls. But Lord, if the story had ended on the Friday, our faith would be in vain. We would be helpless and hopeless amongst all people. But we thank you that the story continues on. Because on the third day, Easter Sunday, the first day of the week, the Lord Jesus rose from the dead, overcome death and overcome the devil. And Lord, because you live, we can face tomorrow. We have a future in heaven itself. So we thank you for this day when we remember that the stone was rolled away and the grave clothes folded away and Jesus was risen from the dead. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your redemption and the blood that was shed and your resurrection and, Lord, the body that was not there. 
So Lord, we pray on this Friday that we will indeed focus upon what you've done for us, just not at Golgotha, but after the grave. And how, Lord, because you live, we can have eternal life this evening. Bless this service and all who take part in it, all that is said and sang and done. May it be to thy honour and to thy glory. Lord, we remember also those of our loved ones who maybe are sick or are sorrowing. We think of those that have known thy touch upon them bodily. And Lord, in our own fellowship, we give thanks for Sarah and also Julianne and their improvement in their health and strength, but they still need thee, Lord. And we remember others, Lord Jesus, who need a divine touch and body upon them. If it be your will, heal them. Lord Jesus, we remember as well families at this time, still under restrictions, although bit by bit, day by day, and indeed week by week, they're being lifted, Lord, but there still are restrictions upon travel and distance and Lord, this would be one of those times of year where family would gather together on Easter Sunday, Lord, and Monday and Tuesday. So I'll just be with families at this time as they miss one another. But Lord Jesus, we thank you for the family of God. We thank you for the opportunity that we had this morning to come into our church car park. And we have this evening, Lord Jesus, to worship thee in a communal sense. Bless our time together we give you thanks for all that you have done and continue to be to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Friends, I'm dealing with the announcements now and these are made according to God's good and perfect will. Thank you for joining us. It is wonderful to have communications from people from all over the place who join us regularly via Facebook and via our YouTube channel and our services on our ministry. May you be blessed through the word of God and worship tonight. Our meetings here in our church that will be online, we continue with our thought for the day, uh, every day bar the Lord's Day. Uh, then our next live stream, it will be on the Wednesday night and our Bible study, why it's going to be an exciting one. Well, we're taken up to heaven and we're taken to the great marriage supper of the Lamb. Have you ever been at a wedding? I'll tell you now, you'll never have been at one like this. So join us. We're looking at Revelation chapter 19 on Wednesday night. Then our live stream services as well next weekend. And we thank the Lord that with churches opening there, that we now have people in our church as the church services go out live. And we just pray that as you will be blessed at home, so will they in the church. Friends, that's all by way of announcements. I now hand over to our brother Nigel Davison, and Nigel is a good friend of our fellowship and assembly here in Dunseverick, and he has sang on various occasions both within the church and our drive-in, and he has prepared a piece for us tonight for our online service. So over to you Nigel, and may the Lord bless you. His hands were pierced, His hands had made the bite and rage and never played at wise the stay.
his heart was pierced, the heart that burned to comfort every heart and yearned, and from it Sunday. Friends, I would invite you, if you have your Bibles handy, to open them with me in Matthew chapter 28. We are thinking about Easter Sunday, Resurrection Day, and our text today will be linked in. That will be our theme for this evening's message. So Matthew chapter 28, and the word of the Lord says in verse 1, In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre, the grave. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers or the soldiers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. Hallelujah. As he said, come and see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There ye shall see him, and lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy, and did run to bring this news to the disciples. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they may go into Galilee, and there they shall see me. We trust that the Lord will bless the reading of his word to our hearts. Well, on this Resurrection Sunday, when we celebrate not only the Lord's redemption at Golgotha, but the Lord's resurrection from the grave. Tonight, I don't want to focus upon a place. Now, you have heard of it. There are for Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. They went to the sepulchre, so they did. So we know about the place, but that's not my main focus. Indeed, not about the person. There, about Mary's about the other disciples, about the angel, about the soldiers, etc. Naturally, our focus will be upon the person of the Lord, but it's a phrase that you could quite easily miss in this text. And that's what caught my attention as I was praying unto the Lord, Lord, give me a message for Easter Sunday evening. And it's this. The phrase that's found not only in these verses in Matthew chapter 28, but right to the end of the chapter. We didn't read it in its entirety. We look at those other verses by and by, for it's a long chapter. But the phrase is found in verse 9. Let's read it again. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All heal. 
And you're going to find that there are three occasions in Matthew 28 that Jesus says all. And we want to look at them because these three alls are three linked but separate messages of Easter that were important to the disciples and are important to you and me as followers and disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ at this time. Firstly, when the Lord appeared and it says and Jesus met them on the way saying all hail that was we could say the greeting of Jesus to his disciples all hail well it was to teach his disciples particularly Mary Magdalene and Mary his mother you read of Salome that she was there as well and other gospel accounts it was to teach them about the Lord's sovereignty do you realize that because he lives we can face tomorrow why is that why do we have such an acclamation such a confidence well i tell you jesus is seated upon the throne he is lord of lords and king of kings hallelujah that's part of the easter story remember thomas that doubting thomas who when he entered into that room with the other disciples had been missing on the two previous occasions. This was the third time that the Lord had appeared unto his disciples. Remember what he said to them. They told him, Jesus is alive. There's good news, Thomas. But he doubted. He says, well, unless I see for myself, unless I take my finger and put it into the nail prints in his hands, his feet and his spear and his side, I'm not going to believe. For me, seeing is believing. And how when Jesus appeared, he said to Thomas, reach thither thy finger. Well, Thomas didn't need to reach thither his finger there. He simply declared in John 20 and verse 28, my Lord and my God. What was he saying when he made that declaration? My Lord, my Savior, the one who has redeemed me at Golgotha by the shedding of his blood. My God, my Sovereign, the one who has risen from the grave and has conquered the devil, has conquered death, and now reigns in glory itself. Friends, the disciples, you read in other gospel accounts, particularly the two Marys, had come to the grave weeping. But how do we find them leaving? Well, it tells us in verse 9, And they held him by the feet and worshipped him. So what was it that happened that changed their weeping on that first Easter Sunday to worshipping? Well, here's my thoughts on that. When they arrived at the place, and we, we read that they arrived at the place or early that first day of the week, we find the scene of the sepulchre. Well, it was, it was empty. Verse 2, And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. And then it tells us about his countenance, like raiment being resplendent. And then it tells us about the keepers who were the soldiers. So the stone was rolled away. And the soldiers, they hightailed it out of there as quick as they could. They ran away. So there was the scene of the sepulchre. When they arrived and looked in, the stone was rolled away. And there was nobody. There was just the grave clothes lying folded away. Then we remember not just the scene of the sepulchre, it was empty. But the sign at the sepulchre, remember the angel sat upon the stone. And he says in verses 5 and verse 6, For I know that ye seek Jesus which was crucified. He is not here, he is risen. Oh, what great news, not just good news, what glorious news. That first Easter there was for the two Marys as they come to the sepulchre. There was the scene. It was empty, the sepulchre. There was the scene. Jesus is alive. But what about the Saviour? Well, we read off in verses 9 and 10. Do you notice how they recognised him? And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them. It had already been promised. The angel had said that Jesus 
would see them in Galilee and there they were going to the disciples and he met them on the way. Weren't the only ones who met Jesus that Lord's Day morning? Sure they weren't. Remember the two in the Emmaus Road? Friends, Jesus says all heal. And they came and they held him by the feet and worshipped him. How, how did they recognise Jesus? I suggest to you two ways. Firstly, his voice. When they heard those words all heal, they, they didn't need to ask, who said that? They knew it was the master's voice. That voice of calling. That voice of comforting. That voice of challenge. They recognised it straight away. All heal. Recognised him by his voice. Tell you something else. They recognised him by his visage. What does that mean, pastor? Well, it tells us that they held him by his feet. And friends, they recognised him by his marred visage. How would they do that? Because they had been there at the cross. Along with John, the rest of the disciples had fled. They had heard about his suffering. They had heard about his sacrifice. These two Marys actually witnessed it. So as they held him by the feet, they could see those nail-pierced feet. And isn't it interesting that they're down at the feet of Jesus. That reminds us of their surrender. It reminds us of their submission to him. Have you ever been down at the feet of Jesus? Why we remember another Mary. Remember Mary and Martha in Luke chapter 10? And we're told that Mary sat at the feet of Jesus. There, there it was about the word. As she listened to the preaching and teaching of the Lord. And she was commended for that. Where Martha the old fuss pot we could say. Was worrying about the house and the cleaning and the dinner and all the rest. And Jesus said, no, you're cumbered with many cares, Martha. But Mary has done the one thing that was needful. There's a time that we need to be down at the feet of Jesus to receive his word. To hear that we are sinners. To be told that there is a saviour and salvation. But here, they're down at his feet and they're worshipping in submission and surrender and at song. Have you surrendered your life? To the Lord Jesus, the redeeming Saviour, the risen Saviour. Have you surrendered your life and said, Lord, forgive me a sinner? The hymn writer said, see from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow mingled down. Did e'er such love and sorrow meet, or thorns compose so rich a crown? Hallelujah, what a Saviour. So firstly, his word, all here. Now let's go on in our text and you'll need to maybe change the page in your Bible. We go on to verse 18 of Matthew 28. Listen to the words of Jesus here. And Jesus came and spake unto them saying, All power, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. You see, the first was about the Lord's sovereignty. Here it is about the Lord's supply, so it is. This wasn't greeting so much. To his disciples, this was the gift for his disciples. You see, they had his presence. The Lord would go on to say in verse 20, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world, until the end of their life, until the end of the world when he returned to the air to rapture the church, and then after the tribulation return to the earth to reign along with the church. Friends, Jesus said, there, Your presence is guaranteed, but you need a gift. If you are going to survive as a Christian, you need a gift, you need power, you need a supply. Just as we have it in our house, if the, there's a, a, a blackout, a, a cut in the electricity, well, well, we're in trouble, aren't we? And how we need that power supply spiritually all the more in our lives. Power for what then, Pastor? Firstly, can I suggest to you, they were worshipping the Lord. They needed a power to sing. And don't we? Because at times we're downcast. At times we're defeated. At, at times there were dismayed by things. Maybe it's our frame. Maybe it's our finance. Maybe it's our friends. Maybe it's our family. Maybe it's our faith. 
And many things can dismay us, cause us to be downhearted, cause us to feel defeated. I tell you, at this time, these two ladies had been weeping, but now they were worshipping. Where did they receive that power? Well, the Lord give them that power in their hearts when they were downcast. They weren't the only ones. Do you remember Paul and Silas in the Philippian jail? It was midnight, we're told. They had been persecuted, they had been imprisoned, they had been beaten for the Lord's sake and for the gospel cause. Does the Lord give a song in the night? I tell you, he truly does. And at midnight, were they complaining? No, they were singing praises and praying unto the Lord, giving thanks that they were worthy for their suffering and telling others the good news of Jesus through their songs. How do we know? Did not the Philippian jailer come to saving faith that very night? Friends, part to sing, part to serve as well. The Lord was to give his disciples the scriptures from which they preached the gospel of grace. He was also to give them, importantly, the spirit by which they preached, proclaimed, and how they persuaded men and women. What did they persuade men and women, boys and girls and teens of? Well, the nature of the Saviour, first of all. That he loved them. That he shed his blood for them on Calvary to redeem their souls. Not only there did from the Spirit they receive the power to preach, proclaim, persuade about the nature of the Saviour, but about the need of salvation. That only Jesus could liberate them from the bondage of sin. You see, without salvation, we are lost. Without the Saviour, we are lacking. Remember the rich young ruler in Luke's gospel who was so religious but lacked redemption. Who was so rich but lacked the redeemer. And he come to Jesus and he said, all of these things have I done since my youth up. And Jesus just looked him in the eye as I'm looking at you. And he said to him, lackest thou one thing. Well, it was only one pastor. <laughs> sure, there's many a thing we, we lack in life. But he lacked the crucial thing. He lacked the saving thing. And that was saving grace in his life. Offered by the Lord Jesus. And one of the saddest texts in scriptures tell us that he went away sorrowful. There he had an opportunity of being saved as you have tonight. And he went away sorrowful. Friends, doesn't the Lord himself remind us? For without me ye can do nothing. And I tell you, without Jesus, you are lacking the central piece in your life that fits your life altogether. And you're missing out upon your salvation. Friends, finally, the last of these alls is in verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Friends, this was guidance to his disciples and it reminds us about the scope of the Lord. You see, up to this point, the gospel had been proclaimed almost exclusively to the Jews. Yes, some Samaritans and Sychar had been saved. Yes, some Gentiles had come and had trusted in the Lord. But on the whole, the gospel message was for the Jewish nation. And it still holds today to the Jew first, but importantly, and then to the Gentiles. For the gospel message is a message for the whole world, for all nations. Well, I want you to see the scope of that message there. They were to go, therefore, and teach all nations beyond the boundaries of Israel. Remember how Jesus in Acts 1 and 8, told them there to start off in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, until the ends of the world. And that great commission is still ongoing this very night, so it is. So friends, we see there the encouragement and the commission to evangelize. But what was the message? So we see there the magnitude of that scope was to the whole world. But what about the message? Well, it was to preach Jesus and his love and his redemption. Remember John 3, 16? For God so loved. That's the scope of, that's the source of love. Where's love? For God is love, John writes in his epistle. 
For God so loved where the world, that includes you, it includes me, it excludes no one. That reminds us of the scope to all nations, to all lands, the gospel must go. That he gave his only begotten son. That's the salvation of it. The salvation is found in his son who come into the world to save sinners. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's the security of it. When you embrace Christ as your saviour, when you trust him as Lord of your life, well, I tell you then, the Lord saves you once for all, forever. Friends, they were to preach Jesus on his love and his redemption. They were to preach Jesus on his lift, on his resurrection. Do you remember that the Lord Jesus suffered at the hands of soldiers, scribes and sinners? Remember in Gethsemane how he suffered so much there? And remember then at Gabbatha and at Golgotha? Yet up from the graves he arose with a mighty victory over his foes. The stone rolled away, the soldiers ran away. He is not here, he is risen. Friends, it reminds us that we have a message to tell the world. At a time of sad news, at a time of bad news, we have good news, great news, glorious news. That Jesus Christ is alive today. That he has overcome the devil, overcome death on your behalf and on mine. He has conquered the enemy. And friends, he can conquer your fears. Oh yes he can, whatever they might be. He can conquer your frailties, whatever they might be, and we have many of those, we might say. Friends, Jesus conquers it all through Calvary, where he shed his precious blood, and through coming, overcoming death itself on that empty grave that proves that my Saviour lives. When we think of this commitment that he encouraged his disciples to take up, to go and teach all nations. Friends, we dare not shrink from it because of fear. It's a call to tell others the good news this Easter. We dare not shelve it because of fatigue. Rather, we must shoulder it because of our faith and what Jesus has done for us. The hymn writer could say as I conclude, we serve a risen Saviour. He's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and he talks with me. A life long, life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Does he live within your heart? I hope and pray he does. If not, call upon him to save your soul now, tonight. There was a miracle, you know, at Easter. Maybe there'll be a miracle in your heart and your home as well. By turning from sin, trusting in Christ, and calling upon him to save you and to commit your life unto him now and forever. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for your word to us. And this little phrase that's found all, oh, Lord Jesus, how important it is, all heal. And we remember, Lord, your sovereignty, your King of kings and Lord of lords. But Lord Jesus, we, we remember as well that, Lord, the disciples, and we are your disciples, those of us who are saved, also heard a call, not just to worship, but to witness, to go and to teach all nations. And we must start in our own communities, in our own localities, and tell the world of good news, because today is a good news story. Lord, for those who are unsaved, may your grace reach them tonight and save their souls. For those of us who are saved, Lord, may your grace touch us and help us to serve and bring honour and glory to thy name, now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Thank you again for joining us this evening. Thank you for uh, your 
partnership and fellowship in the gospel over these many months of online ministry. We really appreciate it. Have a wonderful Easter break and may the Lord bless you all. Now we're going to sing our concluding hymn and then I'll pray. Dear Lord, we just pray that you bless each and every one who has joined us this evening for Easter uh, Sunday evening service. Lord, we pray that they will indeed bow the knee to Jesus, those who are unsaved. And Lord, for those of us who are, that we will go and tell others of the good and great and glorious news of the redemption and resurrection of our Saviour. Bless us throughout this incoming week. And may you keep your hand upon us and all things that we do and wherever we would be. In Jesus our Saviour's name. Amen. Thank you again for joining us. Let's join together for one last time in our final hymn. Amen and good night. Stand now and sing 121. There is a name I love to hear. I love to speak its worth. 121 standing please to worship the Lord.